What is last ones? This is Aspect here. Welcome back to another episode of Route Number Nine. As I promised, we we're gonna have another episode the day after, just because I took again. In case you guys don't know already, like I mentioned last time, how and for some reason you skipped to this episode. Uh, the comment video I was gonna make it just took longer. I made it like like five or six or seven times. I can't remember honestly. I made it a lot of times, and I noticed it was very very long. And I need a work on that before i like publish it if you will so i'm going to keep attempting to make that video but in the meanwhile we'll just keep doing room number nine videos now i am going to give you all a heads up because it is dinner time right now for daichi and seiji uh which means and they still haven't done their task so i'm just giving you guys a heads up right here right now that when there's that cut that's going to happen in this episode which it's going to happen because we're going to have to do a task if it's task a that we choose if you haven't already, check out my Patreon down below because that's the only way you'll be able to see it. And that's not, and again, if you guys are new here, then you'll know that I have been doing this for quite a bit recently because again, I can't put it on YouTube for obvious reasons, even if I censor it, which I did. So I just want to give you guys a heads up on that. And trust me, I tried and it's YouTube's like, hell no, you cannot do that. We are going to freaking report your channel if you do this again. So I'm avoiding that at all costs, so giving you guys a heads up again. If there's a cut in between, it's because stretching's been involved. So just giving you guys a heads up, and again, it'll be available uncensored and such in the Patreon link in the description box down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's go and continue on some room, more room number nine. As it seems like you guys are having, these decisions are getting tougher, and I don't blame you. I don't know what I would choose in this case, because it's going to hurt everybody involved. Anywho. The door to the exchange chamber opened. Just looking at the implements that had been delivered put me in a sour mood. Why did we have to go through this? I was still convinced that going with the, my option would have been better. I mean, doing this to Seiji was just too... He was waiting on the couch in nothing but a bathrobe. Oh, man. How's he look so good in everything? It just put me in an even weirder mood. Normally, I'd be having a little fun with this, but I wasn't feeling it at all. I desperately wanted to go back to our normal lives where I could just praise him and tease him about it. But I couldn't now. If I could have, I would have already done it, and then that realization all alone was enough to foul my mood further. I just wanted it to stop. My dear friend, Mr. Handsome, was examining the strange array of objects laid out on the silver tray. Okay, so we we chose option B. So again, there's going to be a cut. It's only going to be on Patreon. Uh, you guys will know when it happens. And for you guys on Patreon, I'll see you guys soon. But for a moment, I thought he almost looked like an entirely different person. That's how Normal's expression was for the situation. It probably still didn't feel quite real to him, or something. It's not like I was feeling much different in that moment either. None of us do. <laughs> did he just want to say it for the sake of it, or did he really mean it? Either made plenty sense. Ugh, I can't. I can't let Seiji take all the abuse. He cut me off with a deep sigh. He was much more prepared than I was. It made me feel a little embarrassed. Oh, by the way, uh, I guess it's a good place to, you know, I'm assuming at least it hopefully is a good place. But hello, YouTube. It's good to see you guys again. Um, yeah, the only reason I didn't bring you guys back a little earlier as there was some dialogue you missed. It wasn't like anything. I mean, it was still probably some of that you would only see on Patreon considering like, you know, it was a little bit too specific. But I think there's a good point to say welcome back um, as... <laughs> We, you're, you guys aren't gonna have much video, so I'm sorry if this video is gonna be much shorter uh, than last episode I put up yesterday. But there was a lot that happened. And again, you can see that on Patreon, and we we literally played on the PlayStation system. That's the best way to explain what that cut was, if you will. But anyways, CG was utterly exhausted. He stretched his wrists to make sure they were okay. He seemed too exhausted to remove the blindfold himself, so I reached out for his sweaty face. He gently but firmly pushed my hand away. I couldn't do anything about it. He pointed in a strange direction. He should have known where the bathroom was, but was probably disoriented or confused. Either way, I got the message that he didn't want me around right now. His hands are free, but so he could remove the rest of the items himself. Seiji was already taking out the, uh, you know, the, uh, the pepperoni clamps. 
you know, so you can make sure it stays on the pizza, if you will. But he wouldn't look at me. I just kept my mouth shut and skittered off to the bathroom. <sighs> I spit all the saliva that I've been building up in my mouth onto this into the sink and then rinse my mouth out. <laughs> that was a terrible gargle. But I bitter taste lingered in my mouth. Like there was still some you know, salt water in it, and my throat felt annoyingly irritated. It felt like no matter how much I gargled, I never got rid of it all. I guess they didn't give us any mouthwash, did they? I was exhausted and slid down the wall to the ground again. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Anxiety filled my chest. There's no question that this show is terrible, but that wasn't what had me freaked out. When I saw Seiji groaning and writhing on the bed, all covered in sweat, I got kind of excited. No, this can't be happening. What is wrong with me? Would thinking he was gross have been better? Or thinking of myself as disgusting for what I've done? And what they were likely going to make me do next? I didn't like either idea. I didn't want to think of CG as disgusting. I didn't want to think of him as sexy either. Ugh, I hate this. I just want us to be normal friends. I want us to hang out like normal in a bar or even at my apartment. Staying up late into the night, shooting at the shit with Thai balls and oolong tea, snacks, and fried rice. That's the kind of friends I want us to be. <sighs> I let out a deep sigh. I couldn't just hang out in the bathroom forever. Seiji probably wanted a shower too. I washed my whole body with a good smelling body wash. My skin was red from alternating between hot and cold water over and over. My mind was starting to clear, but the smell of the body wash was another kind of reminder. A reminder of Seiji losing himself. The way he squirmed, seemingly mustering all his body strength to do so, make me, making me feel like I was really getting to him. And then that voice. I never imagined Seiji could sound like that. I should have. Th I shouldn't think about this. I can't. I'm calm. I don't even need a cold shot, I told myself. But I also didn't want to even touch my lower body. I I'm too scared. Like, what if something happened? I wouldn't know what to even do. Uh, so I just half-assed my bathing in that area. My boys relaxing laughably in the shadow of my, you know, hair. An absolutely normal state of affairs. <sighs> I couldn't have been more relieved. It was such a small thing, but it put my mind at ease and made me realize something. I get it. Seiji's not the only one. I was starting to change. Or maybe I was already had changed. Just like these awful people wanted me to. Even if we made the opposite choice, the result would be the same. If Seiji were hurting me, he wouldn't be the only one experiencing unpleasant emotions. Seiji would grow across, accustomed to hurting me. He might even start to think he wanted to do it. I didn't want that. It would be awful. Either choice was awful. Everything was awful. But, like, what are we supposed to do? I had to leave the bathroom before I got completely chilled. The room was filled with the fragrant, bitter aroma of coffee. Seiji had changed into his night clothes and was sitting on the couch. He was sipping a cup of coffee he must have made himself. Good. I don't know what I could have done if he was still lying there naked. Uh, the implements were already gone and the sheets were fresh. He must have changed them himself. The corners were folded neatly around the mattress, almost like the sides of a caramel candy wrapper. Seiji's parents really did raise him right. Oh, I guess it was already past 10 by the time I got out of the shower. Looks like I missed my chance to send my laundry out for the day. I took too long in the bath. I had to change the clothes and if I really wanted to, I could wash myself in the sink and dry in the bathroom. I forgot to take my fresh clothes into the bathroom with me so all I had on was a towel. I felt like I made a bit of a mistake there. Seiji looked away from me. Oh come on, you've seen me naked before. Then he grabbed his change of clothes off the bed and headed into the bathroom. I could just barely smell the sweat on him when he passed me. I don't know if he was how he looked in that moment or what he'd done, but it startled me and set my mind to overdrive. Shit. Why do things have to be like this? I suddenly opened my mouth. I glanced over. Seiji paused, waiting for me to continue. I... I have to tell him. Oh man, what, what am I saying? That was really weird, wasn't it? I'm just gonna make Seiji feel awkward, aren't I? Yeah, it was his usual self. He felt normal with his icy blank stare and the shrug of his slouching shoulders. He reacted like it was no big deal. 
I've been sighing a lot more than usual than lately, haven't I? I guess it's only to be expected. I sat down on the bed and then flopped over on my back and stretched out. The coolness of his fresh sheets against my clean skin felt nice. I wonder if we got our points. They saw what we did, right? Well, it's probably fine. I didn't really want to lick at it. It just made things worse. Oh, I can't get too relaxed and let myself fall asleep here naked because the feet's the sheets felt too nah, not the feet, not yet at least, but the sheets feel so nice. I had to get dressed for uh, for bed before Sage got out of the bathroom. Leaving your joystick hanging out is just bad manners. I rushed up to get up and get my underpants on. I should go to sleep first. I had tr no trouble getting to bed, but the sound of the shower kept distracting me and I couldn't sleep. I think it was about a full hour before Seiji came out. I didn't say a word when he came back in the room or when I felt like the other side of the bed sink. He didn't say anything either. I just stared into the darkness of my closed eyelids. I didn't really feel like sleeping. We got our points. Holy Toledo. I wish we used the eight points though. Uh, like, I don't care if anyone sees us. And I, it's like what you said, Vince Servant, as well, because you mentioned it. Like, at that point, if, if, if we made the room viewable for everyone to see, we might as well reveal our information because we're going all in at that point, you know? It's legitimately all in. But I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep. But before I knew it, I lost consciousness. When I came to, I could see light through my eyelids. I knew it was morning, but actually getting up was too much of a pain, so I ended up dozing off into a light sleep over and over. Falling asleep again always felt so nice. I didn't get to sleep until pretty late either. If only I could have stayed like this forever. Time is merciless, and morning refused to wait for me. Of course, I couldn't actually be sure that it was really morning, but it was the time these assholes had designated as much. I should give up on getting back to sleep, even if I am still really tired. Seiji had already woken up. He sat up in bed and reached for his glasses on the nightstand. Huh. I guess when you have, when you have bad eyesight, you always go for your glasses before anything else. Oh, I, <sighs> I rubbed my eyes, my head still firmly attached to my pillow. His reply was curt, but it felt like both of us were more at ease now. I guess with some time and a good night's sleep, we probably both got our thoughts more in order. There was pretty much how I felt right after I got dumped depressed then i tried to sleep but i couldn't but i managed it somehow anyway and then i'd start to forget the two of us are more alike than you th you think sure we look different have different levels of intelligence but in this one in regard we're like two peas in a pod i can't believe seiji's so functional uh, first thing after he wakes up how is he so perfect in every respect it's not fair <laughs> well aside from the way he sticks his hair up in the back like a cockatoo's crest when he gets out of bed don't mention a cockatoo again because when i think of cockatoos i think of mink <laughs> mink's famous cockatoo um was it clara was that the name no clara was the Claire was one of the dogs, I think. Or one of the dog all mates, if I remember. Oh my god, what was Mink's cockatoo's name? How come I can't remember? I can't remember. I just thought Clara the whole time, but it's not Clara. What the hell is that? If you guys remember, let me know in the comment box down below. But anyways. The day's breakfast was delicious as usual. I guess it was porridge? A high quality Japanese style porridge that was gentle on my stomach. There is a tofu dish topped with a del delicately soft boiled egg and eggplant. It seems like something you get at an old mom and pop restaurant. It wasn't exactly the heartiest meal, but it was probably for the best considering how little exercise we were getting. The rice porridge kind of reminded me of, you know what, from the past couple of days, but I opted not to think about it too hard. Not thinking too hard has always been my signature move after all. Seiji seemed to be having mixed feelings too as he ate his porridge. Then when we returned our place, washed our faces, brushed our teeth, and strained out our hair. I feel like my beard is starting to grow out. Maybe I should shave a little. I couldn't believe they provided shaving cream. What was with this place? I mean, I wasn't about to use it or anything, but still. I picked up a disposable razor and slathered my face with the cream. You okay, buddy? I mentally asked a reflection on my now clean face. Am I? The sheets and the rest of the laundry had been returned. They were all folded so neatly, they almost looked brand new. I tossed in the clothes I'd forgotten to put out the previous day. The place really did offer plenty of normal hotel services, but it still made me antsy. It was just like, just so pushy or something, like a constant reminder that this was all part of an experiment. 
kind of like how you would give lab rats nutritionally balanced food pellets, uh, every uh, uh, food pellets, and precisely cal calibrated hamster wheels, so they get just the right amount of exercise and change their litter every day. We were just lab rats running in a maze. They were trying to provoke us. They were fucking with us. But despite all that, I still didn't want to do things to make Seiji or make him hurt me, which meant escape was the only option. I went to the bathroom. The ceiling vents weren't big enough for a person to fit in through. Not even a kid. It's not like I was ever suited to a smooth spy movie style action anyway. Guess I should take a piss while I'm here. The window, still just a screen, was displaying the refreshing morning landscape of Okinawa again. Give me a break. Let me see the real thing already. It was probably impossible to see what behind it without breaking it. It was probably just a wall anyway. They really installed it well. Even when I put my ear to the wall, I couldn't hear anything from the outside. The only place that seemed vaguely plausible as an exit was the exchange chamber. Money. <sighs> Seiji glanced back at me as he went to the bathroom to wash his face. When I didn't respond immediately, he just kept walking. The door to the chamber wasn't locked yet, so I slipped inside. I'd seen it on the first save, but the door was co uh, that connected to the room was a hefty metal one, and on the door to the hall there was no doorknob. I didn't. It didn't look like it could be broken down with human strength alone. I wish I had a bomb or something. Hmm. That door to the outside had to open for them to bring in food and stuff, so if I just had a way to open the inner door while that was going on. Sage and I could probably take down a person or two, but it would be a different story if they were armed. I mean, they could have been guards. There could have been guards out there watching. There might have been a ton of out them out there uh, for all we know. We had no information about what's outside the exchange chamber. On top of that, we've been surveilled into this, inside this room, and we weren't hackers or anything, so it's not like there was some movie where we could just pick the perfect moment to hack the cameras. Using the screens or the TV to secretly hook up a computer to the network is even more impossible. Even if we had a computer and network tools, I wouldn't have known what to do with them. I could barely operate a spreadsheet. <laughs> I did have one idea. What if we used one of our cell phones to record the inside of the room and held it to the camera? You see it on TV all the time. It never worked though. There's definitely more than one camera. They had hidden ones near the bed and in the bathroom. I was confident of that. It was clear from the video they made us watch on the first day, but it'd still be obvious enough without that. Plus like everyone always rags on movies for this too. You'd have to get really lucky to pull some trick on the cameras at just the right moment when a guard had their eyes off the screen. Our only real other option was like deliberately causing a real racket and trying to ambush whoever came to stop us. No, th that wouldn't work either. They just ignore the old man in that video, and we know they did something to get room number 10 under control. They probably drug us again with some kind of gas like they did on the bus. They'd probably do it at the first sign of trouble, and we'd be lucky to get out alive. I mean, we couldn't even do anything if they decided to stop feeding us. What, what hope did, they, uh, did we stand against them if we wanted to hurt or even kill us? Actually... Man... I was even hopeless at getting out of this place in my own imagination. If only I were smart. Before I knew it, Seiji had returned from the bathroom. He was reading some complicated looking book on his tablet while sipping on his tea. Looked like green tea for a change. I leaned on the table and peered at the tablet screen. I couldn't make heads or tails of the book. I was really bored and I felt like watching any more TV would make me brain would make my brain melt. Wait, that's not important now. While we're both against the screen, we were at the optimal whispering distance. I had a lot of experience using the look at something on my phone technique to discreetly hit on girls who had boyfriends at parties. <laughs> I kept the tone of my whisper casual. The TV was on, but I couldn't be sure whether they could hear us. They, t they had to have hidden mics in the room somewhere. Oh. <laughs> He dragged his finger across the screen. When the page turned, the text was even more incomprehensible. I was sure that I could have made sense of it if I had actually sat down and tried to read it, but I had no interest in doing it uh, right now. His voice was curt. His almost his almond um yeah his almond shaped eyes remained trained on the display, following the lines as if he were really reading. I guess he just accepted the reality of the situation. Now had concluded that our best bet was completing the task. Not that I had really anything better, but if even Seiji couldn't come up with anything, there's no chance my dumb brain could have any better. Though another possibility was that he had to come up with something, but didn't want to tell me because there was nothing because uh, they were listening in. 
Whatever it was, there wasn't really anything I could do. I got up and went over to the charging station by the TV and picked up the other tablet, the horrible one that displayed the, excuse me, the results of our time here. I can avoid looking at it if it was going to accept the situation we were in. Seiji shot up to his feet. It was the room that had over 90 points yesterday. They must have really done it. They got 100 points and got out. Their hard work paid off. They endured all the pain and made and made it. Seiji had already come over to stand next to me. I felt like a faint light had appeared in the darkness clouding my heart, but it also tinged with a faint hue of doubt. Was it for real? How could we know they didn't want us to think that? That they weren't just giving us a carrot to hope to keep fucking with us? I had no way of knowing what was real anymore. The other numbers had changed a bit though. Like, room number 10 seemed to be making an earnest to go at it, and the new room appeared not to be making any progress and stuff. When I paused what I was doing, Seiji suddenly slipped in and opened the task screen. All I could do was stare at his long fingers and the TV screen displaying our tasks for the day. And I think this is a great place to stop it off at, but let's see. Southern B must wear the specified apparatuses or the... Okay, so... Wait. Is that the same? Oh no, it's not the same. Wait, is it the same? Hold up. So subject B must create an incision. Okay, so Seiji must create an incision on subject A's body. Okay, so that's still the same. So Seiji must wear the specified apparatuses and or Oh so now task one is the complete opposite. It's the same thing, but the complete opposite, if I am reading it correctly. Um, I'll have to go back and check to see exactly what the task was again, just to make sure I'm not going crazy. But that leaves me the question. Would you choose option one or option two? Let me know in the comment box down below. And I did hope you enjoyed this. And again, I'm sorry that most of the episode was cut. But again, that episode, the part of it that's cut is always available on Patreon. So if you guys want to check it out, go to my Patreon down below. $1 a month gives you full access to everything. So if you want to see what happens, I would highly suggest going there. And it's also all uncensored. So again, benefit benefits there. But um. Outside of that, I did hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. What's your favorite part of this episode? If you do have any, let me know in the comment box down below. And other than that, I will see you also later. After this video, I am going to be live streaming. Not too long, but I will be live streaming for a couple of hours of Persona 5 Royal as we're going to just make some progress in that because I had a month-long break from that game. Uh, not that I wanted to. It was more of me personally. I needed a break from, like, videos and streaming for the most part and it, it was nice to have so i want to try to get back into the streaming again so making a short stream would probably be a good first step so that's what i'm going to plan to do after this video is up and again the uh cut video is going to be up on patreon i'll say that if you haven't go in the description box down below and follow me on the social media sites if you haven't already subscribe down below if you haven't let's try to hit a thousand subscribers on my youtube channel so i could get it back monetized again that would be amazing honestly if we could somehow get Let's, let's see by the end of September if we can hit a thousand that'd be amazing um, But I'd like to get my channel monetized again if possible and outside of that Thank you awesome for watching and I'll see you awesome later. Okay. Love ya and don't forget to stay awesome. Bye